So, let's get real bloody bizarre now. If you've never seen my stuff before, it's time to leave. <laughs> um, who are this non-human group or grouping behind these particular bloodlines and how do they interact? Um, I had to go through this so everyone else should as well. Um, I, was, uh, I was minding my own business in the 1990s and suddenly, uh, I don't know what is this, this, this force I picked up or picked me up, I don't know, 20 years ago, but it's like uh, opening and shutting doors and in, a, in a maze and it says, okay, not down there, down there. Look at this. Okay, now look at that. And what tends to happen is a theme comes into my life and suddenly things are coming at me in relation to that theme from every angle. From 2003 to now, it's been the nature of reality all the time. Just earlier to that, from the mid, just after mid-90s onwards, I kept coming across people who were telling me they'd seen apparently human people uh, turn into a reptilian form and then go back again in front of their eyes. And you think, okay, um, right, back burner with that one. But as the months and the years passed, these were coming at me all over the world. Um, and then I started looking at um, ancient texts and stuff like that and accounts, and you could find the same stories being told all that apparently time ago. And there are many non-human entities that are interacting with this uh, reality. Um, but the, what, the, the, the theme that kept, keeps coming to me over the years in relation to these bloodlines behind the Illuminati is of some form of reptilian entities, um, which are the next stage on, because uh, it goes on beyond them, but the next stage on behind the Illuminati bloodlines and the interbreeders with them is this reptilian group, which sounds real strange until you go with it. Now, Again, this is why the first part today is so important. These n people know that the body is a biological computer. So to them, that's how they look at it. What we call procreation is the downloading of two hard drives, if you like, into one um, which uh, creates the, the, the offspring. To these people, they see that as a downloading of a computer program. And so the obsession, and this is real, goes right back to the ancient world, right up to the present day, the obsession that these bloodlines have, take royalty, aristocracy, and the, um, the, the major uh, banking and uh, business families of the world, they interbreed incessantly um, and always have. And it's because from their point of view, they are holding a software program, which is what? Information. It's a state of being. And when you interbreed that, these hybrid bloodlines, with the general population, that, to them, unique software program, uh, computer program, starts to dilute very, very quickly. So what they're trying to do is hold that um, software, hold that information within the computers by interbreeding um, with each other. The oldest form of religion and worship so far established is serpent worship. It's massive. It goes right back. 70,000 years ago is the, um, the oldest uh, evidence in um, South Africa of serpent um, worship. And after I'd written a book called The Biggest Secret, when I introduced this for the first time, I went to speak in South Africa. And I met uh, this man, Credo Muchwa, who contacted the organizers of my event and said, I want to talk to this, this man. So I went to see him and I spent days with him in the end. And he, he first said to me, he said, Mr. David, he said, how do you know about the Chittahuri? And I said, well, who are they? He said, they are the, the children of the serpent, the children of the python. That's what Chittahuri translates as. And he has many artifacts, ancient artifacts, which um, have been passed down to him through the initiation stream. And one of them is a necklace. It's called the Necklace of the Mysteries. And it's documented to be at least 500 years old. It was been mentioned in, 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 in that period of time. 
and he reckons it's at least a thousand years old. And this necklace of the mysteries has hanging from it a series of symbols which tell the story of the African history. And hanging from the front is an extraterrestrial with a big willy and hanging facing him is an earth woman. And how can I put it, these two fit together. And this is the symbol, the symbolic expression of this constantly recurring theme of the interbreeding which produced the hybrid race. And Credo Motwa says too, the Big Willy is now copper. But Credo says the original, before it was stolen and they had to replace it, was gold. And look at what is at the heart of ancient Egyptian myth, the golden penis of Osiris. Again, the repeating theme of that in Central and Southern um, Africa. This is the extraterrestrial figure. And I asked the obvious question, uh, did they really look like that? And he said no. But for reasons that we'll come to um, in a little while, these gods, he said, according to African tradition, um, said anyone that depicts us as we really look will be instantly killed. And so the people had to start using symbolic ways of depicting the gods to show they were not human while not depicting them exactly as they looked. And this is one way that they, they did it. Also hanging from the necklace is this. It's a flying saucer, we would call it today. This thing is at least 500 years old. He reckons at least a thousand. These ships were not what this Chittahuri, these gods, came in. They came, he said, according to the African tradition, in vast ships, and these came out of the ships to move around the Earth. Conventional science estimates there are at least one billion of these galaxies and around a billion trillion stars. And yet it is more credible, it seems, to say that life as we know it only evolved on this one planet in this one solar system than it is to say, just on the law of averages, bit of a chance, what? That life as we know it might have evolved, and as we don't know it too, in other areas of this vast infinity.
when the colonial powers came into Africa, as everywhere else, they targeted the shaman and the carriers of the ancient knowledge and the ancient history of that area. And in his words, they milked the minds of the shaman and then killed them. So to keep the knowledge um, alive, the shaman streams started to create their own secret societies with horrendous initiation um, rituals to make sure you really wanted the knowledge. Um, and they carried it underground so it would survive. Because the, what the colonial powers wanted, in other words, these bloodlines behind the colonial powers, they wanted to destroy as much of the ancient knowledge as possible because then they could impose their own version of history which would write out what they didn't want people to know. So um, about, uh, what is he now, 90? Crikey. 60 years ago nearly, he was initiated into these secret societies in South Africa. And that's when he learned about the Chittahuri and he's gone on learning ever since. That is a painting, he's a brilliant man, he's a library on legs. That's one of his uh, paintings of one um, kind of the Chittahuri as he calls them. There are many different types as there are different types of uh, human. Hello, I'm at the home of Credo Mutwa, a fantastic man who it's been my privilege to know for a very, very long time. Uh, a Zulu Sanusi, what some people know better as a, a shaman, but it's a high shaman. This man is a, a library on legs when it comes to African knowledge, and anyone that's read my books or seen my talks will see uh, how much information this man has to share with the world. And one of the artifacts which has been highlighted many times in my books, because I think it's so significant, is something called the Necklace of the Mysteries. It's the one with all the symbols hanging from it which tell the story of humanity and the story of Africa. The extraterrestrial figure and the human woman figure and the interbreeding between the two, all that story that I've told many times thanks to Credo sharing it with me. Well, I have to tell you this necklace which is mentioned 500 years ago in accounts and Credo says is 1,000 years old or more, is now no longer with him was taken away from him uh, in Swaziland by people who tortured him in effect, pulling his fingernails off or trying to, and some threatening to kill him. Well, Credo survived, thank goodness, but the necklace is still with these thugs and whoever was behind and orchestrating these thugs. If you have any information about its whereabouts, would you please contact me at an email address, davidikecontact at aol.com. It's all one word, davidikecontact at aol.com, and let me know any information you may have about the whereabouts of this amazing, amazing artifact. And now, let's hear Credo tell the story of what happened and how important this necklace is to him, and indeed, the story of humanity in general. Kredov, could you tell us the story of, of what happened from when it all started? Tell us what happened from the start leading up to now. Yes, sir. I, I was repeatedly phone called by a young man who really was pestering the life out of me. This young man said he kept on having dreams about how I should take him to Swaziland, about how he had great ancestors whose, whom he wanted the help of. He phoned us every night until I got very angry. And then he got himself friends who pestered me on his behalf. And in the end, they said, it has been said by white people that I am a traitor who takes black knowledge and hands it 
to white enemies of the black people. I said, that's nonsense. The, the insinuation even went on that I was not even a Zulu. And tribalism and racism is rife in South Africa today. People can be killed like dogs if their lineage or tribe or family are in doubt. I said to this young man, what do you really want with me? What do you want? He said, I want to see you. I want you to give to us the necklace of secret knowledge. I said, you are mad. I'm not going to part with that thing. I don't know who told you about it. He said, but you are showing it to white people. We who are black like you, you discriminate against. And that's how it started, sir. I decided to confront these people. It turned out that there were many. I decided to confront these people and foolish, quixotic donkey that I am. I took the necklace of the mysteries and the walking stick of the grandfathers with me. And you got on a train to Swaziland? Yes, sir. I went there. And they met me there. And they took me to their home. I did not know that I was going to face a mob. Sir. I did not know that I was going to be put on trial like a criminal. That is where they started taking my nails from my hands away. You were pulling your nails off? Yes. What happened? You know, sir, it was just sheer bloody cruelty. They wanted to see. In fact, these people had been sent to kill me by some white people. White people who had offered them a lot of money for this necklace. It was a nightmare. But circumstances saved me beyond the terrible pain I was going through. You were telling me someone sat on your hand and then someone else was pulling your I fingernails was sitting, off. I was sitting on the chair, sir, when this boy sat upon my arm. It, it was a, a, you know, these uh, weaker chairs. Yeah. And this one sat on my arm and suddenly I felt a terrible pain. He was pulling my nail with the pliers, but he broke the nail in two places. I said, you want to kill me, don't you? That's what you brought me here for. But let me tell you that I am a Sanusi. I am a descendant of Ngoza. I am a descendant of Sifile. I am a pure-blooded Zulu, and I am not afraid to die. Let me tell you that you who are pulling my nail out of my fingers, you are sick. There is something sick about you. You are very, very close to death. He started screaming, saying, what, what, what? I said, you are close to death. I could see shadows in his eyes. I could see something else. I smelled a strange smell, the smell of a person who is on the last stage of AIDS. I said, touch another nail in my finger, and you are going to die 
cheating like a dog. Go on, do it. Then there started an, an angry, an angry uproar. Some said I should be stabbed to death. I said, stab me to death. Within two hours, one of you will die, and that is you. He started screaming and he ran out of the house and he, it was just a, a uproar. I wish you were there to see. People were, were quarreling with each other now. Some said, let this man go. Can't you see he's got an evil spirit? How did he know that you, you are going to have such a stomach ache? How did you know that you have got AIDS? I said, I can see. Kill me. I'm not afraid. I have no friends here. Go on. They took the necklace. I was too weak to carry it out. They took the necklace and the stick and on the following morning, I was very, very sick. A group of the women escorted me to the station. I was put on the train. They tried to be nice to me, but I just was, I was out of this world. I no longer knew what was happening or what was happening. They kept the necklace of the mysteries. Yes. The necklace sir. of the knowledge. Yes. Sir. And you've never had any idea where it is since then? No. Because I have not left here since then, sir. What does that necklace mean to you? Sir, these necklaces are the Bible of the black people. These necklaces are we learn from them things that you don't learn in any school to, to white people. These necklaces are our lives. They were made by women. That is why they consist of copper. Copper is a female metal. That is why they consist of the green stone, Vedite, which was also handled by women. And it's very old, isn't it? It is, sir. It is. I think you told me once you thought it was at least a thousand years old. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. And what effect has it had on you? I mean, how has it made you feel since... Because I know we've talked I, about this many I, times. I and, am and... broken. You know, Mr. David, my heart is broken, sir. I felt I did a stupid thing and I should have paid for it with my own life. Imagine taking a thing like this into the hands of drunken swine. But you didn't know that, did you? No. I thought they were royal people. I thought they were good people. I thought they were adult people, Sangomas and Nyangas, but they were young hooligans. And what, uh, you told me that there was um, a, a white person in the background. That you, you yes, know. sir. What was that about? I don't know, Mr. David, but I can draw that white man. What, I what was he doing? What was his, his he role? He was with them. He, they appeared to be having some kind of a drinking or, or whatever thing. But that white man, say, he, he wasn't just a white tzotzi. He, he had purples behind him. And I noticed another thing. It was he who appeared to be crazy about the necklace. He seemed to be freaking out, if you know what I mean. 
And he seems to be orchestrating it, did he? Yes, sir. And they, um, they didn't seem to like me for some reason, you were telling me. Sir? They didn't like me for some reason. Yes. They asked me, where are you? I say, I don't know. Angazi, I don't know where Mr. David Ike is. They said, but doesn't he write to you? I said, you can search my, my post office. I don't, I don't even own a cell phone. I've only got a real phone. And what was their problem with me then? I don't know, sir. But somehow, the way they were afraid of you. That's very funny, Mr. David. I asked, have you ever seen Mr. David Ike? He said, no. I said, then why are you shit scared of him for? He didn't answer me. I was the white Satan, wasn't I, calling to them? Say? The white Satan, wasn't it, they called me? Yes, the white devil. The white devil. Mm. Because, I but guess, you're sharing information with me, and it's only supposed to be for one group of people instead of for the world. But, sir, there's something that really, really worried me. I only thought about that afterwards. Mr. David, these people, the black people, looked ordinary black people, sick looking. But that white man, no, sir. Let me, let me try and work out. He looked, he was smaller than you, and he looked not quite man-like, you know? How do you mean? He looked, wait, wait, what is the English word? He looked like a fairy, Mr. David Ike. Mm -hmm. He looked not normal, chick chick, real man. He was something between a boy and a man. You, you know, he had protruding teeth. And when he spoke, he seemed to twist his mouth in a certain way. He was not sexually normal. I'm not a judge of white people, but there was something very odd about that man. What would you say now to the people that have the necklace of the mysteries? What would you say to them? I say, you have stolen something that comes from the old gods. You have taken something that even I have no right to. I was given this thing as a, as a custodian of it. I swore you have taken this thing like thieves in the night. Within a short while, something interesting is going to happen to all of you. I see one of you dead under a blue car. It is you with the protruding teeth. You who never spoke who spoke with a hissing sound on his, on, as if his teeth were a bit wrong. And if they want to avoid that, they bring it back? They had better bring it back. They had better bring it back. This I swear by my mother's breasts. The necklace of the mysteries belongs to no one, not even I who am the keeper of it. Bring it back. You were sent to take it away. You were sent by someone. Who it is, I don't know, but I will dream about it. 
them and I will know who they are. You called me a sellout, a traitor who licks the backsides of white men. You are the traitor.